Welcome to the 2020 AP Art and Design Digital Exhibit. This digital exhibition of student works is a celebration and showcase of the exemplary portfolio submissions during the 2020 AP Art and Design adjudication. I'm Rebecca Stone Danahy, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as the Director of AP Art and Design with the College Board. I'm a 25-year veteran art educator, and I taught AP Art and Design for 20 years. Additionally, I served as a reader, adjudicator for AP Art and Design portfolios from 2011 to 2019. During this presentation, we will review an overview of the AP Art and Design portfolio, how to navigate the digital exhibit, select features of the exhibit, a deep dive into several student pages, how to use the exhibit as a teaching tool, and sharing the digital exhibit and student pages on social media, in your school LMS, and more. Before we get started, however, I want to take a moment to explain how this exhibit came about. The College Board has had a digital exhibit for several years. However, the main focus was on the physical collection of artwork and the framing of artwork to show in select locations. Because of the pandemic, we decided that we would only have a digital exhibit to showcase submissions for the 2020 exam. As a result, I researched how schools, colleges, and universities were showcasing art and also drew on my own experience. All examples that I reviewed showcased product but never process. As part of the digital exhibit redesign, it was important to me to develop an exhibit that would give viewers insight into the student process of thinking, making, experimentation, and revision. The result is an informative exhibit that celebrates the incredible art making high school students are capable of creating. To access the digital exhibit, go to the link featured here, https colon forward slash forward slash 2020 art and design exhibit dot college board dot org forward slash 2020 hyphen AP hyphen art hyphen and hyphen design hyphen exhibit. It is also accessible through AP Classroom and on the landing page for AP Art and Design. Before we begin, I want to talk about the two portfolio components for AP Art and Design. The first is the sustained investigation section of the portfolio. In this section, students make and present works of art and design based on an in-depth investigation of materials, processes, and ideas done over time. The sustained investigation is often guided by questions, and it involves practice, experimentation, and revision using materials, processes, and ideas. The sustained investigation section is expected to demonstrate skillful synthesis of materials, processes, and ideas. Along with each work, students are required to submit written responses to prompts about the work. Responses to these prompts are evaluated along with the images that students submit. The most successful responses in terms of assessment are those that clearly related to the images of work submitted, that directly and completely address the prompts, and that provide evidence of inquiry based sustained investigation through practice, experimentation, and revision. The second section of the portfolio is called the selected works. In this section, students make and present works of art and design with minimal constraints. Each work is expected to demonstrate skillful synthesis of materials, processes, and ideas. For this section of the portfolio, works can be related, unrelated, or a combination of related and unrelated works. These artworks may also be submitted in the sustained investigation section, but they don't have to be. Along with each work, students are required to submit written responses to prompts about the work. And just to give a little background about the submissions for the AP Art and Design exam in 2020, over 5,000 3D design portfolios were submitted, almost 37,000 2D design portfolios, and a little over 20,000 drawing por portfolios were submitted for adjudication in 2020. Because of the pandemic, the portfolio was shortened and students submitted 10 images for the sustained investigation and three artworks for the selected works. Going forward, however, all students will submit 15 images for the sustained investigation, 
and five artworks for the selected works. This was a special case in 2020 because schools had closed with the pandemic. So in total, in 2020, over 62,500 students submitted portfolios demonstrating practice, experimentation, and revision as part of the new portfolio redesign that was released in 2019. This means that for the digital exhibit, 51 students had their artwork chosen from over 62,500 portfolio submissions. You can access more information about AP Art and Design by going to apcentral.collegeboard.org. Once you are there, click on AP Courses and Exams. And at the top, you'll see Arts. You'll notice AP Art and Design Program. And if you click on that link, that will take you to the landing page with everything you need to know about the three AP Art and Design portfolios. So let's get started. I can't wait to show you the 2020 AP Art and Design digital exhibit. We'll review navigating the 2020 AP Art and Design digital exhibit first. Welcome to the 2020 AP Art and Design digital exhibit. I'll take a few moments today to go over the layout and design of the exhibit so that you can familiarize yourself before getting started. You'll notice when you log in, you have kind of a running header of images featured in the digital exhibit, as well as our title. Here, this link for AP College Board is a live link, and if you click on that, that takes you to the landing page for AP Art and Design so that you can learn more about the content for the portfolio. Over on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the hamburger menu for the menu. By clicking on that, you'll be able to preview or look at all of the student names in alphabetical order by their first name that are featured in the exhibit. By scrolling down, you'll see the link to a statement by myself, as well as the chief reader. And then the table of contents is visual. You'll see the student names, again, in alphabetical order by their first name, an image of their artwork, and what portfolio they submitted artwork in. By hovering over an image, you'll notice that it changes color. That designates a portfolio. So green is 3D design, purple is drawing, and orange is 2D design. That's just a little tool that we did to help, nav help viewers navigate through the exhibit. So by scrolling down, you can see artworks that you may wanna click on to. So in this case, case, I will click on Audrey's artwork. And this takes me to her page. Once I'm in her page, I can get back by going to the menu and the welcome page or selecting another artwork. I can also go down to the bottom of her page and notice that I can select previous or the next artwork to continue to scroll through the exhibit. Next, let's review select features of the exhibit. As you navigate through the 2020 AP Art and Design digital exhibit, you'll notice that student pages are designed individually and uniquely for the student content. For example, if I click on Abigail Cutler's page, I see her artwork, I see a quote by the artist, and I see a student statement that helps me to understand about the artwork presented. In this case, the teacher also submitted a written statement, further connecting the student's process work and thinking to the final product. If I go to Amanda Rosler's page, as an example, I see her artwork, I see the credit lines for her artwork, I see a quote, but this quote was pulled out of her video student statement. And we see that embedded here in the page. And as I scroll down, I have also a teacher statement. In this case, which is an audio. So you'll notice throughout the exhibit, there might be audio, written, or video statements 
And in some cases, quotes were pulled out to emphasize certain aspects of the student art making process. Now let's take a deep dive into several student pages. So the first student page I would like to explore is Manuel Guerrero Zedinert's uh, 2D design portfolio submission. Um, and on his page, we see several artworks that were featured uh, in his 2020 AP Art and Design uh, portfolio. So we, by scrolling down, you see the artworks. Um, they are, uh, the first one is untitled. We know that it was done with uh, Prismacolor and Faber-Castell markers on poster board. And we see that um, throughout his artworks. And we see the extreme detail um, that he put into his artworks, which is unusual for a high school student. What was also unusual with uh, Manuel's portfolio submission is the process work that he included in composite images along with his final product. Um, and so we see through the title, again, um, the materials and the uh, media used to create this work and his process um, that he uh, clearly wrote out. So in this case, on the right hand side, we see coloring after ink lines dry. I meticulously colored each segment with the surrounding in mind. I would like to especially highlight Manuel's process pages. By looking closely, we see evidence of Manuel's thinking in the making process. On this page, we see reference to James Terrell, a contemporary artist, and Manuel is looking at light and how color combinations interplay throughout his artwork. And you can see this investigation here in his work, and we see his writing about it, um, and then we see direct relationship from his sketchbook pages into the artwork. So this is not an afterthought for Manuel. By scrolling down, we see another example of his work, also a composite image with process work, and a quote where Manuel states, my inquiry was exploring how I can use color, detail, and composition to portray different gatherings and to convey the vitality of those scenes with them. In this case, we see that Manuel is again looking at lighting and he's looking at, at references. So here we see um, in his sketchbook work references to a video, video game. We see his um, visual and written notations to himself about shadows, about lighting, um, and about what that might look like as he explores before um, creating this artwork. So he really wanted to know how does he create shadow? What colors does he use for that? Um, how does light reflect? How is he going to show that? And so we see that evidence of that synthesis of experimentation, of the process work, of the revision, of his thinking here into the making of the final project. Scrolling down, we have another example. Um, I believe this is uh, an illustration of shopping in Ikea um, at the start of the pandemic or before. And again, we have more uh, sketchbook pages. Again, dealing with light, dealing with shadow, dealing with color. We see his thoughtful color combinations here um, with his writing. And again, his notes to himself um, about how he's going to use it. And we see then the application in his final work. So this is a nice page to talk about with students. One, because of the high level work that is uh, accomplished by the student artist, but two, because of the process work. That in Manuel's case, his sketchbook pages are not an afterthought. This is not something he did to fulfill the requirements of the exam. This really shows his struggle as to how he thought about and pursued um, the, the solving of problems in his sketchbook work before he began his final project. And then we see another uh, final example down here and Manuel's signature at the bottom. I would also like to point out, and um, I'll talk about this at the end, that uh, this page, as all student pages, have their own digital URL that you can grab and post into your school LMS system. Um, so again, this page is a nice example of process work with product to show how students demonstrate their thinking as they pursue the making of art.
Gina Partridge is another drawing student that we'll take a look at today. So Gina submitted this composite image as part of the AP Art and Design portfolio. And what we learned in process of looking at her work is that each of these images were created when Gina had the flu. And in her statement, she talks about getting up every hour to draw how she was physically feeling. And we see the mark making, the value, the compositions change over the course of time as her sickness develops. Her teacher states, in working with Gina, I often had the opportunity to bring up a lot of different issues with the class. Being able to have Gina do this work illustrated so many things in an opportunity to be able to have great rich conversations with my students. And I imagine many of you would feel the same way if one of your students brought in a work like this. So we see here Gina's um, composite of uh, drawings documenting um, any pain or sensation she was feeling over a 24 hour period. And her medium for this was charcoal and water. And we see more examples of Gina's artwork here, again, as part of this investigation as to how she was feeling, we see this as one part of her portfolio. This was, this was submitted as, I should say, this um, composite image was submitted as part of her portfolio. This wasn't her entire portfolio, however. But this is an engaging work, an advanced idea for a high school student, and as her teacher states, it is a work of art that created many great rich conversations with students. And so we can read more about the student statement here. And I think this portfolio really exemplifies the idea of inquiry, that you have an idea, that you pursue it over a period of time, and that you're not necessarily going back to the same topic, which in this case, in part, is how she's feeling, but it's also about communicating it and exploring her, her feeling in different ways throughout the 24 hours. And again, this is just one part of her portfolio. The next artist we'll look at is Andrea Campos. Andrea is from California and she submitted her work in the drawing portfolio. By scrolling down on her page, you will see this very accomplished painting and notice the sheer number of portraits included, as well as the visual ideas communicated about language and the relationships of people and culture and language as communicated by black and yellow outlines. And here we see um, this title is, it came from the larynx and it is acrylic on canvas. And Andrea writes that this is a self-portrait with flags and portraits of diverse people connected by yellow lines. And it's the connection of language. I highly encourage um, everyone to listen to Andrea's student statement. She is extremely articulate and is able to communicate her ideas very eloquently and, and um, with much sophistication. And students especially should listen to her video because it is important for to hear in the student's voice how she explains her thinking behind her artworks. And so two more artworks from Andrea's portfolio were selected. Um, Better Than This, which we see here, acrylic on canvas. And then on the left, Not a Mexican, also acrylic on cardstock. And this one is a little bit smaller than some of her work. By scrolling down, um, we have the teacher statement here. Let me just refresh this for us. And um, I also encourage you and your students to listen to Jeff Carter's statement on Andrea's work. He also eloquently explains Andrea's process to her work and some of his teaching practices to support her in the classroom and to teach her um, about uh, simplifying and painting quickly so that she was able to accomplish um, a large painting like this and finish it in time for the AP Art and Design Portfolio submission. The next artist I'd like to review with all of you is Amanda Rossler. Amanda submitted a 3D design portfolio. And as we take a look at her page, we see 
that she her artwork involves sports equipment. And we see that very clearly here in the first two images. We can also, also read further about it through the credit line for each of the artworks. And as we scroll down, we see a quote by Amanda. And she says, I use sporting equipment because growing up, I was good at sports, but also good at art. I didn't want to be just a jock or just a girly girl. I wanted to be more than that. I wanted to be well-rounded and I wanted people to recognize and celebrate multiple talents. And we can hear Amanda and see her um, talk about her artwork and the evolution of her portfolio in the 2020 um, AP submission for 3D design. So with this page, we see many examples of Amanda's work. We see close-ups, we see composite shots that give us details about the work. It also is ingeniously photographed in the gym. On Amanda's page, we also have a teacher statement. And then we see another composite image of Amanda's process work. You'll note her collaging, her drawing, her writing, even use of materials that helps the viewer understand the evolution of her thinking as she discovered and explored and produced these amazing artworks. And her teacher, Elaine says, my challenge to Amanda was to ensure that she was respecting her work by giving it her best mental effort. I asked her often to pause just for a moment before the final execution. And you can hear more from Elaine Buckley here in her audio submission. And of course, at the bottom of Amanda's page, we also have her signature. Let's look at Holly Johnson's portfolio. Holly submitted a jewelry design portfolio for 3D design. And as maybe you've seen in some of the AP Daily videos, uh, Holly focused on Notre Dame. And she talks in her portfolio about how she was also an AP art history student and she was influenced by the burning of Notre Dame in 2020. And so she used that as a starting point for her 3D design portfolio. So on Holly Johnson's page, like the others, we see examples of her sustained investigation. You'll notice the composite shots show us pretty good detail of how she um, appropriated the rose window in her ring design or her cuff design. The locket representing the doors and the entry of Notre Dame. And then we have a student statement from Holly. And she says, working with metal forced a smaller scale and limited my color palette, which allowed me to focus primarily on structural elements and simplifying intricate designs and recognizable patterns. And as we scroll down, we see a student statement from Holly, which you can read about further, and process work. This process work is important because it truly shows the viewer how the student engaged with inquiry and the idea of appropriating Notre Dame, a cathedral into jewelry and how to represent that adequately. So we see Holly's sketching, her writing, collaging as she thinks through how this will work for her. We see another example from the sustained investigation here, her ring representing flying buttresses, and again, the locket with, more, with a quote from her statement. We see more process work here. Again, that ring we just looked at above of the flying buttresses, her notes, and just a really great um, sketchbook page that allows the viewer insight into how Holly went from her ideas into her final work, which we see here. And finally, scrolling down, we have a teacher statement. Um, Holly's teacher states, Holly was never short of ideas throughout her investigation. Her sketchbook and pre-planning are masterful. You can simply open any page and find a cognitive stream of inspiration and planning. And truly, we see that represented here with Holly's mood board. And we see her sketchbook pages collaged, we see images collaged, her note-taking, 
all of her thinking comes together and allows the viewer to have insight into how, how Holly jumped from the idea of Notre Dame and jewelry design to the process and to the production of her final product in her uh, 2020 3D design portfolio. And the last student we'll look at today is Nicholas Martinez. Nicholas Martinez submitted a 2D design portfolio and we see a wide, a wide variety of work in what he chose to submit. Nicholas decided to focus on signs. He also uh, uses laser cutting um, to create traditional Mexican uh, papel picado artworks. And Nicholas states, I realize words more importantly, signs can communicate very direct messages about questioning racial identities. And we see that here in his work. And so while these are three-dimensional signs, they're photographed in such a way um, that it, it is uh, very applicable to the 2D design portfolio. So scrolling down, we have a student statement from Nicholas. We see a composite image of his artwork with close-ups or details. And again, another composite image here, really allowing the viewer to understand the process. And so what's interesting about Nicholas's portfolio is that um, he uses unusual processes to create these signs. So he has um, probably cross collaborations within his art department to perhaps um, tech classes uh, within his school. And so another quote, he says, this year I've used modern technology such as laser cutting, vacuum forming, and Adobe Illustrator, combining them with traditional imagery to create conceptual illustrations representing the psychology of being Mexican American. Nicholas also submitted a video, which you can see and listen to here on his page. And then we have a teacher statement. Um, and so the teacher statement is very informative to us as viewers. It allows us to understand how Nicholas was able to clearly and sophisticatedly uh, communicate a large idea that could be a hot topic, but he does it in such a way that it's disarming um, to the viewer. And his instructor talks about how um, Nicholas actually wrote a six page paper um, he researched Mexican printmakers. He wrote about that. That could have been for another AP class, such as AP research. And then he uses that as a starting point. His teacher also goes on to say, I also helped facilitate difficult conversations around race, class, national, and cultural identity. So this is clearly a classroom where students are free to talk, where they're free to investigate their ideas, and they're supported and what it is they're trying to accomplish. And I'm sure all of you are doing the same thing, but we see it so evidently in the work that is produced here. And we see here that uh, the quote that he wrote a six page essay about Mexican uh, printmaking and then spent the better part of 12 weeks exploring without committing to a final concept, which resulted in a portfolio with a very wide approach to form with a very narrow concept about his relationship to his cultural identity. And so I'll let you go uh, you know, back on your own time to explore this, but we have a, a pretty detailed uh, teacher statement, which gives insight into how the classroom is run. So the goal here today is that you as AP art and design instructors or other course instructors will be able to use the AP art and design digital exhibit to perhaps learn for yourself. It might be some professional development. It might be teaching your students. It's examples to show your kids what other kids around the world are creating. And while these are high level portfolios chosen um, for this exhibit, they were all chosen because they represented contemporary issues, high level work happening around the world. Um, and, and they were created and informative and, and uh, demonstrate investigation throughout the sustained investigation inquiry and have excellence in selected works as part of their portfolio. So I encourage you to really go through um, the menu, the table of contents, 
and explore the AP Art and Design digital exhibit. So let's talk about how to use the exhibit as a teaching tool. So one of the things that I am truly hoping that teachers will do uh, this year and in future years is use the digital exhibit as a teaching tool in the classroom. First, give your students time to scroll down, to engage, to look at the works. My goal is for students to have exposure to a wide variety of ideas to understand what other students are doing across the world. Now, like you, I was an AP art teacher, as you know, for 20 years. I know that students live in their bubble within their school, and they oftentimes have trouble understanding or are not exposed to what other high school students are doing. Um, so it's important that they see this. It's important that they see um, the wide variety of materials, of ideas, of processes, um, and to understand um, the, that maybe they're not alone in really considering um, issues that are important to them such as Autumn English's um, work on environmental issues and that she thinks the world needs to wake up or Andre Peransky's um, work on consumerism and how that defines us and, and creates our identity as a culture. Or Bella Gallo and the idea of being insecure um, and having um, this idea of uh, your insecurities exposed, which she illustrates uh, through this kind of whimsical um, drawing of orthodontics and a lipless mouth. Or Avery Jacobson talking about the idea that there isn't a lot of artwork uh, focusing on interracial, interracial relationships. And so she decides that that's important. Or Blake Sabah, who captured the fires that happened in California in 2019. She chose to show the chimney that was left from her neighbor's house and layered the fire truck on top of that, the toy fire truck, um, which was uh, representative of child's loss um, from the California fires. So a very moving image by a student who decided to um, use personal experience and capture that in the AP Art and Design portfolio. So it's important for students to see this. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that maybe you'll give um, warm up time um, every day and allow students to go through the exhibit, maybe assign them a few students to um, look at in order to even write reflections on in their portfolio. The other point that I wanna make as we go through this is that a lot of students, I shouldn't say a lot, you'll see students that are dealing with um, contemporary issues such as inter interracial relationships or environmental issues or in this case, in Drival Canva's, her um, idea of what defines beauty, beauty and how the um, media gives it back to us. So students will see um, a wide variety of ideas that maybe um, adults have difficulty talking about. If we go back to Nicholas Martinez's portfolio about uh, racial identity, you know, or if we look at um, Henry Bao's uh, uh, charcoal drawing on um, really the influence of a drunk, drunk driver who killed his uncle and his, his visceral response to that through a charcoal drawing. So students are dealing with very real, engaging and contemporary issues, but they're not doing it in a way that adults do. So what I mean by this is what I found in creating this exhibit is that the students um, have a way of presenting it to us that's fresh, that is informative, that is thoughtful. Um, and it's almost, I don't wanna say innocent, but there's like no baggage with it. And so the artwork is very approachable. For example, in um, Hunter's portfolio here, her entire portfolio is all about um, the pandemic and being in quarantine and what happens when your families don't get along and she showcases that here. Or Gracie Baker talks about um, being in the pandemic and really giving up her senior year and the depression that came with that and how she had to self-reflect that you know she felt she had become slovenly and what was she gonna do about that? And so she illustrates that um, in this wonderful colored pencil drawing on paper. And she even talks about how she didn't have um, her normal materials at home. And so this is, this is what she was left with.
So students are going to see bits and parts of themselves um, through this portfolio, and they're going to understand that they're not alone in their care and concern for the world and contemporary events and what's happening around them. So for me, as the director of AP Art and Design, I learned a lot from the students. I learned how sophisticated they are in their thinking, and I have such appreciation for the teachers that supported these students and for all of us for supporting all students everywhere as students try to navigate and figure out to, and understand how to visually communicate their ideas about what's happening in the world around them. So I'll just go on just a little bit further here. Um, John Rogerio talks about um, being confined in a house and, and uh, being alone. So you can see that further. Lucia Lee talks about um, the idea of um, being carnivorous um, as humans. And so we see that very playfully and sophisticated um, in, a, in this illustration. Lucas talks about um, the idea that he couldn't finish making his ceramic projects in his studio. So he taught himself how to use um, virtual software so that he could um, illustrate what he wanted to make. Larry Fullwood Jr. does this wonderful um, painting uh, series on 90s hairstyles for um, Black women. Michelle Q um, created an artwork that represented what was happening in the pandemic as it was emerging. Um, and, and, and even adults didn't have time yet to really wrap their heads around what was happening. But Michelle here um, at the high school level exemplifies it so clearly um, through the background and through um, the foreground in her illustration. Prince Abrahams talks about um, gender and identity issues in his portfolio. Orlis Gonzalez um, talks about how in the pandemic, he did not, again, did not have access to uh, his normal supplies, um, but he says that construction materials were always available around his house, so that's what he used. I recently learned from Taylor Mormon that after the pandemic hit, she also had no art supplies at home, and she said that her teacher struggled to get supplies to the students. Um, and so her teacher gave her basically a box with a random assortment of items to use, kind of like a mystery box. Um, and in her case, it was this uh, transparent colored um, plastic sheeting that she used then with her iPhone because she also didn't have her camera or access to a camera. And so she was able to use her iPhone to uh, take photographs um, and experiment with that. And she said it ended up being very inventive for her and it worked out. Um, but her artwork was a direct result of the pandemic and her teacher's effort to help her uh, create work for the portfolio. We saw Nicholas Martinez's portfolio. Taylor Jackson talks about the relationship with her siblings. Connor Atchison um, adeptly submits a 3D portfolio with furniture design. Jackie Lee uses abstract painting to showcase his travels and the, the landscapes from his memory. And Tanner Fulton wanted to use what he had learned and his love for geology, and he wanted to combine that in sculpture so that there, he had um, a product that was functional but also represented his interests. So he creates a nightlight that represents a cave. And Chowman Yu um, talks about her trip to New York, and she illustrates all the things that she did in one day um, in this digital composite. So you can see a lot of different student interests um, from fashion to sculpture to drawing to jewelry to design um, to printmaking. Uh, this, the sky's the limit with what students are doing and capable of doing. So I'm so pleased with the work that students submitted in the 2020 exam. It's informative, it's innovative. We see process work, we see revision, um, we see ideation, and we see the struggle as students um, try to make sense of the world around it, around them and communicate it in an informative way.
And the final topic is sharing the 2020 digital exhibit and student pages on your social media, in your school LMS, and more. Some suggested formative assessments or uses of the digital exhibit in your classroom include as a bell ringer, where students are assigned a page of the digital exhibit to review, as a warm-up activity at the start of class, allowing students to explore the digital exhibit and choose what they want to look at. Students can use their sketchbook and write reflections on specific student pages and portfolios that they see. Uh, students can be assigned to do a think pair share on what they see in the exhibit or how they interpret specific works and talk to each other about their learning. You could use low stakes quizzes or polls to get a better sense of what students have learned from looking at the digital exhibit um, and how maybe that's changing their ideas about their own portfolio work. You could ask students to revisit their brainstorming and process work in their sketchbook and contrast um, to the pages that they have created and what they see in the digital exhibit. So how can they improve how they show their thinking and making? You could schedule five minute chats with students to discuss their ideas for their art and use the digital exhibit as examples for how students may move forward and better their own art making process. And you could review the AP Art and Design rubrics with students and select student pages to have discussions on how the rubrics apply to the student work. So a couple things I want to point out about the digital exhibit. First, you'll notice this is the main URL that takes you to the front page with the table of contents of the student artwork. As you click on each of the student artworks, however, you'll notice that um, each student page has a URL with their name on it. This is so that the student can grab the URL, copy it, and paste it out on their social media. The links here also for Facebook, Twitter, for email, um, and for LinkedIn as possibilities for uh, sharing out uh, their work. Schools are also welcome to do this. So um, that way, each student is getting the publicity and social sharing you know, that they kind of deserve for, for being celebrated. Um, in this 2020 AP Art and Design digital exhibit. So uh, for you as a teacher in your LMS systems, you're welcome to grab any of these URLs. They are individual, as I said, for each of the student pages and or share you know, the main um, table of contents page, which we saw here. Again, feel free to share this um, with your students. Um, within your school community and even your AP coordinator or administrator um, just to see what's happening around the world. I'm convinced that if more people saw what high school students were capable of communicating about the world around them in such sophisticated ways, there would be greater support for art and design in school programs everywhere. <laughs>